So what I do for a living, I guess, uh, yeah, it's a tricky one. I, I, I climb pretty much full time, um, but I'm also an IFMJ mountain guide. So I have that in my back pocket. I do love guiding. I do love giving people um, experiences in the hills, but I guess selfishly, what really is important, if I'm honest, is my own personal climbing. Favorite cam? Yeah. Uh, probably my, uh, probably my C3, I reckon. It's kind of like a get out of jail piece for me, you know. So I grew up in the southwest of the UK, which was really near to Cheddar Gorge, and for me, that was where it all started. I noticed you're airing those. Yeah, well, these absolutely stink, mate. My father, by trade, is a motor mechanic, and my mum, you know, worked in a fudge shop. Have you ever been hit by anything big? Yeah, I've been hit by um, yeah a couple of well a couple of big Scottish blokes. My maths teacher would wander up to a cliff called Split Rock and uh, come and find me when I should be in class and uh, drag me back down into my lessons. I just can't get rid of it for some reason. I don't know, there's a lot of like, I don't know, ropes are like memories in a way, you know. I left school at 16 and came to the Alps and lived in an apartment with, uh, we're supposed to have two people in, but there's 14 of us in there. Matt's, Matt's sort of like, you know, the combination between probably Bear Grylls and Brad Pitt, isn't he? You know, he's like, that is Matt Helica, basically. I love him, love him desperately, you know. So for me, I'm a real believer in, uh, you yeah. kind of make your own path in life. I really believe that that comes down to just my determination and my motivation for my own climbing. Uber talented, very, very talented. He gets ill all the time. He's like, you know, he's like a pedigree dog. I'm really sort of proud of my grassroots and, and the people that I started climbing with, I'm still best mates with now. So uh, I'm still very much a passionate climber and see myself as an amateur climber. I work as a mountain guide here in Chamonix. In there, yeah. Put it in there. For my father as a farmer, he finds it very hard to understand why I'd want to do anything else apart from bringing up sheep and cattle. I think John has a lot of respect for Matt and I think John, because John's quite serious. Try and keep things organised, but it can be a bit chaotic. I don't think John would probably go out climbing with anybody who he didn't particularly respect. When I was a bit younger, I did a lot of trips to the Himalayas and Greenland places, but the last kind of decade have been really focusing on Alaska. And I think the fact that he respects Matt so quietly respects him so much, I think helps. A few years ago, my grand died. My mum was chatting to someone at the funeral, and it turns out there's this guy, uh, Leopold Amory, who's a distant relative of mine. And he was like really into his climbing. In fact, wrote two books. He started reading the books. I think the first time he did the Matterhorn was 1906. It must have been quite an early ascent of the peak. After the First World War, he's back in the Alps again. He's proposing this double traverse of the Matterhorn. Completely mental, you know. So I guess oh. <laughs> in some ways, you know, I've got a bit of, of uh, mountaineering blood in me. Yeah. Halleck is basically the James Hunt of mountaineering, whereas John. John's definitely the Nicky Louder. 